The following video is sponsored by InstantMaddenCoins.com. The only place to get Madden Coins instantly on every console and platform is InstantMaddenCoins.com. Use code CLICKWID at checkout for a 10% discount. Hey, what is happening everybody? ClickWood here, back again with another video for you guys. Today, what we're going to be doing is showing you all my 2017 full NFL predictions. So, this is actually going to be every single game of the 2017 NFL season. We did already have one game, and if you guys watched one of my previous videos, I actually did break down the full Kansas City Chiefs schedule and the full New England Patriots schedule. So you guys can go check those out if you're interested in my opinion specifically on those two teams. But in today's video, what I'm gonna be doing, like I said, is giving you my full predictions for every team, all records, everything included, so at the end of today's video, you're going to see exactly what I believe to be the playoff picture heading into the playoffs for the 2017 NFL season. Technically, it'll be the 2018 playoffs, I guess. But uh, with that said, guys, I'm going to go over to the actual spreadsheet here. And if you guys are interested in actually seeing this, you guys can go and check in the description below if you're interested in it. I won't spend a whole lot of time clicking through this because it's basically just going to show you wins and losses for, from throughout the season, okay? So obviously, I've got the W next to the team that I think is going to win, the L next to the team that I think is going to lose. It's color-coded, very easy to follow, and you guys can go check it out. Um, again, I have every single game of the 2017 NFL season in here. Of course, it is a little bit weird because we have Tampa Bay and Miami right here. This one has actually been changed and uh, transported to week 11. We're still going to keep the same prediction, but for the purposes of uh, not messing things up, I guess, um, we are going to keep it here in week one. But uh, obviously understand that Tampa Bay and Miami is not happening this week, so it's going to be moved to week 11. But with that said, we have every other game here in the right spot, hopefully, if the Hurricanes don't mess anything else up. Um, but again, you can go through and check out what your team specifically is going to do. You can do a search if you want to, find your specific team. We've got all the bye weeks listed here, obviously, as you go down and check that out. And essentially here, guys, what I actually did was physically go through and predict every game of the season. Um, and I tried to keep in mind things like winning streaks, um, playing at home, playing at home for an extended period, playing on the road for an extended period, all of those types of things. And then you're going to see down here at the very end, uh, we've got obviously down to week 17. Now at the very bottom of the spreadsheet, you're going to see, um, and I'll actually rename them here right on the video. So uh, games, and then uh, we'll rename this final records. And here you go. Final records, we're going to see the AFC first, and I will actually show you guys the full rankings that I have for teams by division. So there you have it first, the AFC North up here at the top. I'll even zoom in on it just a little bit more so you guys can maybe get a better idea here at the very top. So the AFC North, we've got Pittsburgh going 12-4. and four. We've got the division record. We've got the home record, the away record. And what I believe that they're going to be as far as the seed goes for the playoffs. So Y means that they're going to have a bye, and obviously 2 means that they're going to be the 2 seed. I also think that Cincinnati out of the AFC North could finish in the playoffs as well as the seed. Sixth seed, Baltimore very slightly is going to be below Cincinnati. I think that they barely missed the playoffs this year, also at 10 and 6. Um, we've got tiebreakers in here that I have actually determined to be, um, as far as I understand them anyway, and I, I think I'm correct with all of the tiebreakers, but uh, Baltimore would actually lose the tiebreakers to Cincinnati as far as how things are broken down in my individual game breakdown. So, there you have it. Cleveland Browns obviously finishing at the bottom here, 3-13, and 0-6 oh in the division. Yikes. So they've got a chance to prove me wrong here in Week 1 against Pittsburgh, but I don't see that happening. So let's go over to the AFC East. Now, again, I already did predict New England to beat Kansas City in Week 1. Obviously, that, in hindsight, is incorrect. So hopefully uh, you guys understand that. I did not change my prediction based on what we saw. So um, obviously, that would move them down to 13-3. and They would still finish slightly ahead of Pittsburgh, who I have at 12-4. and So they would still be the number one seed. But Kansas City is going to get an extra win on their record. So that could change things just a little bit. Uh, but again, New England at 12-4, and I think they win this. This division pretty handily. Buffalo at six and ten. They could steal a win 
against New England, I think, this season. Uh, but the rest of the teams, Miami, the Jets, I, I my personal opinion is I just don't think these teams are going to be very good this season. Crazily enough, Miami did make the playoffs last year, so I could be completely off. But the lack of Ryan Tannehill there, I just feel like they don't have a whole lot of credibility going forward. And and I think they were maybe the worst playoff team that made it, um, you know, aside from Houston, who uh, had some bad quarterback situations obviously going on. And uh, obviously when you got to the actual playoffs, Oakland not having Derek Carr last year was a pretty big disaster. So they were probably the worst teams. But Miami, as far as actually if all the teams were healthy, I think they might have been the worst team that made the playoffs last year. So I don't think they're going to be particularly good this year. I wouldn't be surprised to see a pretty significant drop-off. In the AFC South, I have the Tennessee Titans also going 12-4. and four. Uh, Playoff tiebreakers would make them not a first-round bye. However, they would be the three-seed. They would, however, obviously be a team that wins their division at 12 and 4. So they would have in the first round, they would be playing the worst of the wild card teams, uh, which in this case, again, going up the number six seed, Cincinnati. Um, and I may do another prediction video if you guys are interested, actually. Uh, predicting what I think is going to happen in the playoffs prior to the season starting. So I may do that tomorrow if you guys are interested in that. Let me know in the comments section below. But Tennessee here at 12 and 4, division record at 5 and 1. Very, very dominant for the most part in the division. I think Houston is going to be pretty decent this year at a 9 and 7. They still have so many quarterback question marks, though. Uh, their running game isn't particularly good. Their offensive line isn't particularly good. So I think they're going to have issues. But man, that Houston defense is certainly good enough that they could sneak into the playoffs as a wild card, I think. I don't think that they're going to beat Tennessee for the division. However, they do always seem to give Tennessee problems. So you never know what's going to happen there. Then in the AFC West, I have the Oakland Raiders also going 12 and 4. Tiebreakers would make them not quite as high as Tennessee or as high as Pittsburgh, but I do think we're going to have quite a few very good teams at the top here in the AFC. I think I also am going to have the Chargers making the playoffs here as the five seed, which kind of caught me off guard. Now, again, I do have Kansas City winning an additional game than this, obviously, because they did actually beat the Patriots, and I gave them a loss in that game. So you add on one win to everything on here. That could change things, but Kansas City still at 10-6. and six. I'm not sure that they're going to overtake the Chargers. Um, that would still come down to the actual um, tiebreakers, which in this case, a lot of people would think it would be division, but if I remember correctly, it is actually conference record that would determine who would make the playoffs between these two teams. Because it would be a wild card, it would not actually be um, uh, determined by division, if that makes sense. So yeah, I think I have the Chargers going 10-6, and six, making the playoffs. Denver, uh, barely, you know, they're just barely under 500 as a 7-9 and nine team. I think they're going to struggle in the division this year. I think they could potentially go 0-6. Honestly, these are three pretty good teams in their division, and Denver just does not have it on both sides of the football. They might be the best overall defense in the league, but, man, that offense is not looking good right now. That quarterback situation is rough, and the running backs are not any better than they were last year. Despite adding Jamal Charles, I just don't think he has a whole lot left in the gas tank at this point. So there you have it for the AFC. We'll go over here and take a look at the NFC. The NFC is a little bit more interesting, I think, a little, maybe even a little bit less predictable, actually. Um, and we've got the Green Bay Packers here at 13-3. and three. Winning every game in their division at 6-0, I think they're going to pretty easily waltz right on into the playoffs. I think that they're going to have a good chance potentially to uh, even have the number one seed. But I've got them as the number two seed right now. Um, and obviously, the rest of the teams in the division are going to struggle, in my opinion. 7-9 and nine or below for all of them. I think Chicago could be one of the worst teams in the league this season. I have them down there at 2-14, and 14, not winning a single game on the road at all this season. But I do think they steal one from a division rival, and you'll have to go check out my actual game-by-game -game rankings to see where I have them winning a division game. In the NFC East, this is one of the more, more tightly contested divisions in football, obviously. I think in week one, we're going to see a p potential very, very, very important game between the Cowboys and the Giants. I have the Giants winning the division at 11-5, and five, but if Dallas can steal one in week one, and I say steal one despite the fact that they are the favorites, they lost. And when I say favorites, I mean betting favorites in Vegas. Dallas is like a four-point favorite going into this week. 
Uh, but if they're able to actually defeat the Giants here in week one, that's going to be a big momentum boost for them. They could potentially just go on to roll and win the division like they did last year. Who knows? But I do think the Giants are a pretty good team. Uh, they've improved in most areas of their team this offseason. So that makes things pretty difficult because they were already a team that had the Cowboys number last year. Um, I actually, my Dallas Cowboys, if you guys don't know, I am a Dallas Cowboys fan. I have them slightly missing the playoffs here at nine and seven, three and three in the division, six and two at home, but three and five on the road. They have some tough road games this year. Obviously, if you take into consideration the road in, uh, in the actual NFC East, they'll have three of those games, just like every other team does within their division. They could lose all of those. I would not be particularly surprised if they lost every one of their road division games this season. All of those teams have the possibility of beating the Cowboys, and that's why I think they're going to slightly miss the playoffs here at 9-7. and seven. Down to the NFC South now, and we've got the number one seed, and obviously the Z means that this is a team that I think is going to get the number one seed home field advantage along with um, the first round bye. And then uh, I have them at 13-3, and three, like I said, winning every game at home this season at the 8-0 record. The Saints, 10-6. and six. They are actually going to make the playoffs after finishing 7-9 and nine in three straight seasons. I think New Orleans is ready to take that step forward. I know they lost Brandon Cooks, but I still think that this team is an offensive firepower. And defensively, I do think they're going to be better. I don't think they're going to be a good defense, but they've been an absolute train wreck in, in recent seasons. And I do think they're going to start clicking eventually here. Carolina at 8-8, eight and eight, you know, 500 team. They could sneak into the playoffs potentially with a winner, an, a win where I have them getting a loss here or there. But I think overall, they're pretty much a 500 team at this point. Tampa Bay is a really hot team right now. I think a lot of people think that Tampa Bay is ready to take that next step and get into the playoffs this season. I don't personally see it. I think that they're going to be one of those teams that is extremely inconsistent. They're going to be a good team, but not a team that is going to make consistent victories over good other good teams. So they're going to struggle in their division, finishing 1-5. and five. I do think they'll get a win here or there. And I think I actually, if I remember correctly, predicted them to defeat Atlanta. So that's a little bit surprising. Uh, you might think that's a little bit surprising, but th that's just one of those teams that Tampa Bay could potentially beat, in my opinion. They have the, the offensive firepower to do it, and they've got some players on defense as well. They really do. So last but not least, the NFC West. I've got Seattle beating out Arizona by one game, finishing 12-4. and four. They would be the number three seed in this scenario, which means they would not have a first-round bye, but they would get the worst of the wild-card teams, which in this case is going to be the New Orleans Saints at 10-6. and six. So it would be New Orleans heading to Seattle in the playoffs. Arizona finishing 11-5. and five. Very, very good record for them. I think that this team was just one that was kind of banged up last year uh, in a lot of areas. And I think that they're going to get back on track this season. If Larry Fitzgerald can stay healthy um, and not wear down over the course of the season, if John Brown can stay healthy, which, you know, that sickle cell situation, it can potentially flare up here or there, who knows. But I think that they have a ton of talent on offense, pretty much everywhere other than maybe tight end. And their offensive line does need some work too, of course. But defensively, they are one of the best defenses in the league. And uh, if they can just continue to force turnovers, if they can get some contributions from their pass rushers, we're going to see a very improved team from what we saw a season ago out of Arizona. I think they're going to be very, very good this, this season. They're going to be difficult to beat for any team. And uh, San Francisco at 4-12, and 12, I do think they're going to slightly edge out the Rams as the bottom end of this division, but it is a very top and bottom heavy. There is nothing in the middle between these division, in, in this division, in my opinion. Arizona and Seattle are very clearly better than San Francisco and Los Angeles. And uh, Los Angeles, again, I just don't think with Jared Goff at quarterback defensively without Aaron Donald at the moment, he still hasn't signed his tender to get or not even a tender. To, he still hasn't reported to camp. He has a contract. He just wants to get paid more. So it's a pretty wild situation out there because he is the Rams' best player overall. He is absolutely one of the premier players in the league as far as I'm concerned. Definitely the best defensive tackle. So if they're missing him, they could be worse than this, to be honest with you. But I do expect him to report at some point to get back on the field. If Hopefully he'll get a contract. He does deserve it. So there you have it, guys. Three and thirteen for the Rams, four and twelve for the 49ers, eleven and five for the Cardinals, and twelve and four for the Seahawks. That is my prediction. Uh, run through the the playoff teams one more time if you guys are interested. In the AFC, for the number one seed, we have the New England Patriots. Number two, Pittsburgh. Number three, we have Tennessee. Number four. 
that would be Oakland. And then your wild cards are going to be Los Angeles, uh, the Chargers, and the Cincinnati Bengals. And then we scoot back over to the NFC, your number one seed, the Atlanta Falcons, number two seed, the Green Bay Packers, three, the Seattle Seahawks, four, the New York Giants, and then your wild cards are going to be Arizona and New Orleans. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this little video. If you did, make sure you drop a like on it, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Like I said, I'm going to be bringing you guys some playoff predictions, most likely, if you're interested in that. We've got a ton of content coming up here throughout the season, so make sure you stop on back. Thanks for all the help with everything, guys. I know a lot of you were commenting on my videos before. I wish that I could have done a full prediction and gone in depth for every single team. It just didn't happen. Um, if you guys don't know, I announced yesterday on Twitter that my wife is actually pregnant with our second child. It's been a little bit of a different, difficult week for her. She hasn't been feeling well physically, so um, I've been taking care of our other daughter and haven't really had a whole lot of time to put out new videos. So I wanted to do something because I know you guys were interested in this, my predictions for the year. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. So with that said, I will talk to you guys soon. Hopefully your NFL teams get a W here in week one. If you're a Buccaneers or a Dolphins fan, hold out, hold on. Um, you know, your team's going to be playing in week two, and I wish you guys all the best of luck as far as, you know, health and all that stuff in regards to the hurricane. So thanks again, guys, and I will talk to you all again soon.